Welcome back to more awesome days? Days contest? Contest days? Yesterday's winner for the Troll and Toad credit is going to be down below. Maybe they can reach out to me and get that claim via email, you know, social media, anything. Guys, we have a Twitter, right? Like, everybody's like, oh, you don't have a Facebook, Robbie. We have a Twitter. Literally, read the description of any video. Five seconds will just save you a whole lot of time. Today's contest, I found this yesterday while we were looking through stuff. Ah! This is the first mat that we ever actually made. It was our take on a dragon-esque made. And I think that this, uh, so many people had asked me, hey, Robbie, do you have extras of these? Honestly, I thought they were all gone. Evidently, I kept one for myself after all these years. So, if you want to get entered in down below to win this beautiful piece, right here, all you got to do is make sure you leave a comment on the video down below, like the video, and of course, make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss out more awesome content. Well, we're going to go pass it on over to Nazarene's Ghost Tricks for the day. Yes, Ghost Tricks, of all things. Very interesting. <laughs> Ghost Tricks, actually a fan favor here. Today we're going to be looking at a little slightly different way to play the deck, all right? So some of the cards you're going to want to emphasize for your strategy here. The first one's going to be Ghost Trick Mansion. So monsters cannot attack face down defense position monsters, but can attack directly if all monsters their opponent controls are face down. All effect damage and battle damage inflicted by monsters other than Ghost Trick monsters is tapped. So straight off the bat here, you have a field spell that your entire game plan is going to be focused on turning the monsters on the opponent's side of the field face down. So what Ghost Tricks are always great. That's why when Lynx came out, a lot of players were like, ah, I can't play my Ghost Tricks anymore. I understand that there was a lot of anger and hostility to that, but if you can, you know, take care of the field before the problems even happen, well, you can do your thing. And Ghost Trick Mansion is going to give you that game plan to play after you flip down everything. Next up, we have Ghost Trick Scare. Target any number of face-down defense position monsters you control. Change them to face-up defense position. Count the number of Ghost Trick monsters among them. And if you do, change that many monsters your opponent controls to face-down defense position. This is going to be another support card that you're going to have to do a massive board flip. Now, typically, in modern Yu-Gi-Oh!, you won't be able to, on turn one, effectively make too many monsters. But the cool thing about this is, once you get your Dolhan and your Exceed monsters going, you'll be able to start that revolving game plan, which will start allowing you to set up further and further. So, massive board wipe flip-downs are good. So what happens when you get the monsters face down? Well, Ghost Trick Knight. While a Ghost Trick monster is on your field, your opponent cannot flip summon. So everything that's face down, you don't have to worry about. They're gone. They're in the spooky zone. All right. And when this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's card effect and sent to the graveyard, your opponent cannot declare attacks for the rest of this turn. So the cost of outing this Unless it's a cosmic cyclone or something like that, you take your opponent's battle phase away from them. You're literally a stall strategy in that regard. So I think that that's quite hilarious. So you flip down everything, you got a game plan to attack directly, and you ensure that those little spooky buggas that are face down aren't coming back to haunt you. Now, one of the cool things that they got here that really I think a lot of people uh, kind of forget that they have this is they have a card called Ghost Trick Renovation. So you can target one Ghost Trick field spell in your field zone. Return it to the hand. And then you can activate one field spell from your hand or deck. You know what we do with this? We mystic mine our opponent. That's right. We can stall our opponent out on a whole nother extra grind game. You can banish this card from your graveyard, target one Ghost Trick Exceed Monster you control. Special summon from your ghost or your extra deck one Ghost Trick Exceed Monster with a different name by using the target's material. This is treated as an Exceed Summon and the materials will transfer. And you can only use this effect of Ghost Trick Renovation once per turn. But like I said, the main point of this is you bounce back your field spell, Mystic Mind your opponent at a key point in their strategy so that you can play the game. It's literally Metaverse, but Ghost Trick. And then the last monster I want to emphasize here for this deck is actually Ghost Trick Fairy. So it cannot be normal summon unless you control a Ghost Trick monster. Once per turn, you change this card to face down defense position. Keep in mind that every Ghost Trick has that clause. And then when this card is flipped face up, you target one Ghost Trick card in your graveyard, set that card, but banish it when it leaves the field. Then you can change the uh, face up monster your opponent controls face down defense position up to the number of set cards that you control. Is that a secondary board wipe or board set? Yes, it is. 
All right, now we're gonna pass it on over here to the deck profile. We'll talk about a couple more of key cards as well there. All right, so this is what we're working with for Ghost Tricks from Nasri today. And like I said, uh, this is very much a fun deck. Um, he also wanted me to point out that Zeus is sometimes counterintuitive to the strategy, but sometimes you just need a big board wipe for your opponent. So he played this at his locals um, and actually had a lot of fun with it. So we have two copies of Doll. So during the end phase, all right, change as many face-up monsters on the field as possible to defense position. Then you can special summon one ghost trick monster from your deck and face down defense position whose level is less than or equal to number of monsters flipped face down by this effect. So you're also going to have the exact opposite here with Fairy. This is also going to be recursion here, all right? And then, pff, how many things can you flip face down? It's literally how this works. We have one Jack Frost here. So once per turn, changes card face down defense position. Remember, everybody has that effect. When an opponent's monster declares a direct attack, you change an opponent's monster. Oh, change that monster to face down defense position. If you do, special summon this card from your hand and face down defense position. Did somebody say extender, actually? So this puts another body on the field here. Now, Jingashi is one of the oldest. I Actually, it's like the centerpiece of this deck. So, when this card is flipped face up, you can add from your deck to your hand one ghost trick monster whose level is less than or equal to the number of ghost trick monsters you control. At minimum, it will be searching a level one. Now, in your level one arsenal, you have Lantern here. This is probably your most valuable ghost trick. Once per turn, goes face down. All right, when opponent's monster clears in a direct attack, or when a ghost trick monster you control is targeted for an attack, you can negate that attack, and if you do, special summon this card from your hand in face down defense position. This is actually your battle stopper, and this gives you the ability to capitalize and protect your investments so you can start generating advantage off of Jingashi and the rest of the board downs. Now, Mary here. When you take damage, all right, any kind of damage, battle damage, effect damage, uh, you can discard this card, special summon a ghost trick monster in face down defense position from your deck. Any piece that you want is available to you through this. Now our one-ups here, we have one mummy. While this card is face up on the field, you can normal summon one ghost trick monster in addition to your normal summoner set. All right, and it also has the ability to flip face down, but this will grant us extending capabilities. We have Spectre here, and when a Ghost Trick monster is destroyed by an opponent's card effect or by battle with their attacking monster instead of the graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand and face down defense position. All right, so we actually have another extender, and we get to draw one for this guy. And then Stein here, when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can add a Ghost Trick spell or trap card from your deck to your hand. So, we get access to Mansion. All of our combo pieces that we need to set up and start doing those boards that we were talking about at the beginning are available to you. Now, spells here. We have one called by the grave. We have triple copies of Ghost Trick Mansion. We have two copies of Mystic Mind. I do know that you guys hate Mystic Mind as a card, but to be honest, in a strategy like this, I think it's fine. We have two Swords of Concealing Light. Destroy this card during your second standby phase after activation. When this card resolves, change all opponent's monsters that they control to face on defense position, and monster your opponent controls cannot change their battle positions. Ooh, we flip down everything and we don't have to stare at it. We have one terraforming to search for you know, our field spells. Now, traps are going to be a combination of things to stall the opponent out, make sure that we can progress the game back to our turn so that we can actually do what we want to do. So we have two copies of Crackdown to steal from the opponent. We have triple copies of Floodgate Trap Hole. Once again, you get those monsters face down on like a huge field. You're not going to have to deal with seeing them. And then we have two Knights, two copies of Renovation and Triple Scare. And then we have the one copy of Vanish. We can reveal one Ghost Trick monster in our hand. This turn, Ghost Trick monsters you control and face down defense versus monsters you control cannot be targeted by or destroyed by card effects. So this actually, once again, gives you that protection clause that you need. It's a one of, it doesn't do anything else, honestly. We have one Metaverse, and then we have two Quaking and two Storming here. I don't need an extra deck. So we have one Assembled Nightingale. Now, what do these exceeds do? So, so cute boss. So it's two level two ghost trick monsters to make it. While you control another ghost trick monster, your opponent cannot target this card for attacks. That's pretty good. Once per turn, detach and exceed material from this card. Target one face up monster on the field with attack less than or equal to the combined attack of all of your ghost trick monsters on the field and destroy it. And if you do, that monster zone cannot be used as long as you control a ghost trick monster. Think about just start taking away all of their zones and punishing them. Dolhan here is your basic one. Gets 200 for each material, or ghost trick card you control. 
Uh, so it'll be 12 on its own, and then for every one that you have, it'll extend up. And then once per turn, detach one, target one face a monster on the field, half its attack. And if card is sent to the graveyard, target another ghost trick card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. So we get some recursion here. Then we have Angel of Mischief. So you can exceed some of this card using any ghost trick exceed monster you control, except for Mischief. All right. Uh, of course, the Exceed Materials will transfer, and when, a, uh, no, when the number of Exceed Materials on this card becomes 10, you win the duel. Once per turn, detach your material from this card to add one Ghost Trick Spell or Trap card from your deck to your hand. Then once per turn, detach a Ghost Trick card from your hand to this card as Exceed Material. You have a semi-slow win com, but it's fine. It's actually really good. Triple Lou card here. Monster opponent controls cannot target face up Ghost Trick Monsters or any face down defense position monsters for attacks. Set this one. Detach one, target a card your opponent controls that set and destroy it. And then you can only use that effect of him once per turn. And if his card is sent to the graveyard, target one other ghost trick card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. More recurability, actually. Now, we have one downer magician, one Zeus, and one Omega for loops. Side deck here is completely up to you. We have two Lancia, two Ghost Bell, triple Nibiru, triple Gamma, one Driver, one Harpy's Feather Duster, and triple copies of evenly matched. Wrapping up quite an interesting display of what this deck actually has going for it. So guys, what do you think about this really fun special? Please leave a comment down below tell me what you guys think. Smash your head the crab out, subscribe in so you guys don't miss out more awesome content. Get in to win today's playmat. Alright, I'll see your beautiful faces back here later on the day with some more cool awesome content. Have a good rest of your day, guys. Peace. Thank you, patrons, for making the ride never truly end without you guys' support. Well, I would probably be doing Truffle Shuffle videos for a living. Guys, please check out Vanquil 40 for all of your card fight Vanguard content brought to you by Mcol 40 And if you are looking to pick up singles, check out mcolgames.com for your trading card game needs. Thanks for watching, everybody.